Okay. It's a Bad Like 90s dance hall, but of course we're premiering Bad Like Brooklyn dance hall oh, wow. on Sunday. Okay. So, yeah. Can you believe it, Adam? It's one more year already. Yeah, this is our second year up here doing it. It's yeah. like frickin' frack here, you understand? <laughs> Best friends, we go way back, way back to two years ago. When I had the red and black lumberjack <laughs> with the hat to match. Remember rapping dude? You all know who this is. Is anyone know this is? The heart, the heart. You never you thought this of is. hip-hop. This is Judas Boldly. Everybody make some noise for Miss Judith. Far. What up, Adam? Miss <laughs> Judith is here again. Later on, you'll be hearing more from her. She's going to do a piece uh, a panel later about the genres that exist within the Caribbean. But first, before we get there, we have another. First of all, um, really quickly, who appreciated the last conversation? Did I, did I uphold my promise? Was it not very insightful? Were those people not truly some of the greatest minds in music today? Um, and it's such an honor and a pleasure to be in their presence, and I'm so glad you all got to hear from them. Ms. Judith, what are we talking about next? I don't, I don't, I don't know. I need this some help. This is artificial intelligence. Can I just take some time to say hello to Permanent Secretary Moyo, all the way from Zimbabwe? Oh, wow. Thank you for being here, brother. Also want to say welcome to Jamaica, welcome to Jamrock, to our Guadeloupe team. They're 20 members strong. They came in deep. Rolling deep. They hopped out a bus. It was like 50 of them, I swear. I thought we was about to have to fight. I said, what's up? They said, no, no, no. You don't want these problems. We from Guadalupe. Yeah. We, we'll beat your country. I'm sorry. I want to thank you so much for all the persons who have turned up on day one and have turned up on time. Fascinating conversation that we just had, like Adam says. We're talking about artificial intelligence next. It's that discussion, you know, and the question is, um, who in here is familiar with artificial intelligence? Um, who in here would like to know more about artificial intelligence, right? It's, the question is, is it friend or is it foe? Um, as musicians, as artists, as songwriters, as producers, as managers, as business executives, as marketers, as PR professionals, it is inevitable. Artificial intelligence is here and you are going to have to interact with it. And the best way to interact with anything is to be knowledgeable about it. So please, um, we are going to bring to the stage Mr. Bob Frank. Mr. Bob Frank, music and business. He's been in it for in excess of three decades, but he's also added tech icon to his whole music icon-ness. And the second person we're bringing to the stage is make some noise for Costi. Mr. Costi. And you, of course, know that Costi is the one that did Godongde. If I should give you the slew of things that Costi has actually produced, it would take too much time. So Grammy Award, multiple award winning, Costi. Make some noise, please, out of music conference. I said, make some, y'all don't embarrass me. Make some noise, out of music conference. I feel like a dad. Hey guys, nice to be here. Nice to be in Jamaica rather than Manhattan. I uh, thought maybe a good way to start for those that aren't using AI now is just to quickly walk through how vertically integrated the process is already for most of the music business. So for, like, for instance, for my company, dealing with an artist who's using Lyric Gen to help finish up the song, not write the song, but help, help with a verse. Then they're using Databox to make the album. Then they go to their mastering engineer who's using Ozone to master the record. We had to do a contract amendment. Uh, we used AI to do that, it took 15 minutes. Then we used another uh, AI very well, uh, it's used a lot now, I forget what it's called, something diffusion to create the album cover. And then for the marketing plan, rather than hire an outside marketing company, we use ChatGPT. Uh, and that saves us money and time. That's a process that's happening everywhere right now. It's called disintermediation. And that simply means removing the middleman. Uh, and to manufacture the vinyl, we use the plant that uses AI to maximize production times. Uh, I just visited the plant in Nashville. 36 presses, brand new, using AI to make physical product. So 
I think that tells us all already how much AI is integrated into the music business. So we'll, we'll touch on all that. And, and every one of those AI apps I mentioned, there's 20 of them that do what each one of them does. A lot of companies now are creating their own AI apps to do those things, and that's called inferencing. So that's gonna be an area of specialization that's really gonna explode now because it doesn't take a billion dollars to do that. You can actually use AI to help create an app that does that using their own AI, if that makes any sense. Well, uh, in perspective of writing, for example, me, I'm a producer, writing, composer, artist, and uh, I'm not afraid about AI, because you know, writing is a craft. And um, I have to tell you a story, a very nice story. I've been in Jerusalem, in Israel, where is the capital of three religions, and I've seen something very interesting. Music is the only art left on this planet that can put people, thousands, a lot of thousands of people together. Because, you know, there I've seen a lot of hate in Israel, a lot. You know, because of the religion thing. But when the music started at 12 in the clubs till 5.30 in the morning, all the people were dancing on the same music, on the same beat, on the same everything. And when the music stopped, they realized that they remember who they are. They remember again to, to hate. And they were listening music that was, you know, <laughs> made by men, made by people. And I'm not afraid about AI because can be a tool. Like we have our phones. We have, you know, we, we use them. You use also our computers. I started music like 26 years ago, you know, producing, and I was recording on tapes <laughs> and hard drives. And I had, I didn't see any screen. And the technology, you know, become better and better, you know, just made me better. So I think, anyway, AI can help us, or I don't know if I can say help, but you know, it's a tool. It's a partner, it's a co-pilot, it's an assistant. And it reminds me, oh, I guess you guys can already tell that I'm a all gas, no brakes supporter of AI. It's called, um, uh, there's, a, there's a group of tech people, which I'm not a part of, but they're called ex ex extreme accelerators. Uh, and I support the innovation. I do think we've gotta be careful in some regards, but not in our business, because there's nothing we can do to stop it. It's been here for a long time. Google's used AI to fight cyber attacks for 10 years. Associated Press has used AI to write articles for 10 years. So 10 years ago, a lot of these companies were already getting into it. Our business has been too. It's just that recently with all the big money, uh, the big learning ones, ChatGPT and the rest of them, with Amazons, with just, just announced that new proximity Find engine, not a search engine, they call it a find engine because it doesn't give you a ton of links, it actually gives you an answer to a question. So it's only gonna get useful to us as a business. And as I mentioned backstage, it's similar to what happened with spreadsheets when VisiCalc launched spreadsheets in 1979 and everybody was afraid that it was gonna get all the accountants, make them all obsolete. I think we're gonna see this, the same thing because it's just gonna make us more productive. And it's referred to as a, a time collapser. What used to take five hours takes, takes one hour. There is gonna be some obsolescence. Like if you're making background music for video games, st stuff like that, you just don't need to pay for that anymore. But the creative process itself, um, a lot of the artists that I've talked to, they're, not, they're using AI to help them. It's similar to how you might have a writing room with six people in a room in Nashville working on a song four times a week. Um, I have a publishing company in Nashville and that's, that's, that's what they do. Um, they're using AI in other genres too, just to, to help, just to help with, uh, with the verses. It's not like the app Boomi. That's the one that Spotify just threw off like 10,000 tracks. But those 10,000 tracks were only 7% of the tracks that on Spotify. And they weren't 
dropped because of they were AI created. They were dropped because Spotify, uh, Universal actually told Spotify that they noticed streaming patterns that were impossible. So they were thrown off for uh, abnormal streaming, which Spotify is very careful, careful about that. Um, so with, with AI, as we start to use it as more, in, in more of the process from, from soup to nuts, it's just gonna, get, just gonna get better for us. But I do agree with you, there's nothing like the song that's created by a producer that they play in the clubs. And that, I don't think that's ever gonna change. But the fact that apps like Boomi are out there, and if you've ever used it, I mean, Google has one too. It's not called Boomi. And, and Amazon has one too. They have these ones called NSynth. There's literally every big tech platform has its own platform to create music. 100% or just as an assistant? Yeah, well, um I use AI, in fact, you know, a lot of uh, manufacturers, not a lot, few of them, you know, majors, manufacturers who are making, you know, plugins for music, you know, for EQs, compressors, they sent me and to my team to test them and to give them reviews and tell them what to do. Back in the days, also, I was a programmer, so I was working in basic Turbo Pascal, Turbo C, you know, so uh, I was programming a lot of things. But also, I'm into the music. I was doing music from when I was little, <laughs> so. And um, right now, they are sending us, I cannot tell the names of the brands, but they are sending me and to my team, you know, different plugins that they are using a lot of AI. But also, there is a button who can, you know, make it manually. You know, push the manually. Okay, you can switch the knobs and everything is the way you want. But also there is the, <laughs> the button called AI. So, you know, they can make for you if you don't know things, if you don't have years maybe, I don't know. So this can help a lot of people. Also, if you know things, also if you don't know things. So um, it's just a tool and we don't have to be afraid again. Because, you know, we are gonna have in the, in the perspective of a writer, of a composer, of an artist. We're human beings, you know, and we're gonna have that, you know, new things, you know, that like uh, some moments that nobody can expect. So that's gonna make the difference between us and a machine. This is my opinion, my humble opinion. So we don't have to be afraid. The humans, we are still the creators of the AI. And the first, the first AI program, the first thing, you know, command, it's called random. Random. That was the first command that, you know, I was using that back in like 30 years ago. And now, look what is happening. And still we are here and doing great. There's a great new book that just came out it's called The Musician's AI Handbook. And that one, I, I, a lot of what I'm talking about I learned from that book. And then I just Google it and test it and see what works and recommend it to my team. Uh, I think the guy's last name is Kalzinski. He's also got a big digital podcast. He's fantastic. Um, this also reminds me of the early days of digital when I was a young executive at Polygram. And the older guys, probably my age now, then, were terrified. And I remember them saying to me, Man, Bob, I'm glad I don't have to deal with this. And, and it, they were wrong in how they handled it because the first thing, first thing they did was fight it, which was the dumbest thing the industry's ever done, in my opinion. Um, and it just really hurt us with Napster. And Napster wasn't the first. They were just the first to reach the kids and the consumers. There were other ones, too, that we used in the industry in the early 90s where someone would say, um, hey, Bob, I'm going to send you this remix from Tokyo. You're going to get it in, in New York on Monday, I'm sending it Friday, one song. So that was very early, kind of comparing that to, because AI's been around, AI's been around for 75 years. The movie um, game was about the, the father of AI. That's what it's called, imitation, imitation of, of humans. Um, and all this, th all this, where we are now, comes from, from him, from Durang. Uh, and with digital, we use things like pipeline and uh, comparing that, I often talk about that, how the thing I think we're doing better as an industry is 
we're not trying to get in the way. We're trying, even, even the big moves that Universal's made with TikTok are kind of related to AI. Um, and they're trying to do this with Spotify too. And as a, as a big independent, even though I go through Sony Orchard, we support it too because everyone's worried about a platform like TikTok just using AI generated music, which they, 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 they already are. Um, and they, they pay very little anyway. But we're trying to set some standards in the industry where there's, there's, there's a way that the AI generated tracks, like from a boomy, and there's 25 boomies, don't kind of take over that platform. And that's kind of the risk. But at least we're addressing it, and the industry leaders are actively dealing with the DSPs to try and address this. Because I believe the number is, I think Spotify still adds like 100,000 songs a day. So it's just an incredible number. Um, and a lot of the stuff everybody's read about um, Universal's position with Spotify, where they don't think any streams uh, that get one stream or less than 1,000 streams should get monetized. I think they've committed to that. I'm not sure. But like one-fourth of, I believe it's 180-something million tracks on Spotify, one-fourth get no streams, zero. Uh, but all this... To stick to the AI theme, a lot of the negotiation is about the concern about that because eventually that'll be 500 million tracks and how many of them are going to be driven by pure AI? Yeah, so there are a lot of tracks, you know, that, you know, they are releasing every day. The thing is that still is one threat for everyone who's programming the AI and what's the purpose and, you know, also, regarding the TikTok thing, the, you know, the algorithm sometimes is based on some kind of things. We don't know exactly who's programming that. Because, you know, you make good music, okay? But the algorithm, if the message, for example, I'm just saying, I don't know. I'm, you know, let's have a open dialogue here, because that's why we're here. Um, the um, algorithm maybe doesn't like your message. And you, as an artist, you should be a free human being. And you can express yourself, because still we are in, we should supposed to be in free countries, right? Well, still, if you are not, if you, for example, maybe you're gonna be against the system, your track we're gonna be no it's not good let's put someone else, somebody else so we have also to deal i think you know the new ai <laughs> maybe for the kids will be the new god i'm telling you that the new the kids they are not going to churches they're staying on tiktok and pray to the new ai that's the new god i know maybe you know but AI is going to be the new god for, you know, likes, streams, and everything. So, <laughs> I don't know. Like, even, you know, you go to church and you have to pay for that, those things, you know, candles and everything. You have to pay to open your streams, you know, to go viral. So, this is a question. I'm just asking you too, you know, like, what do you think about it? Because... Something is going on, and we have to be aware about it. Regarding the, you know, the writing and composing and, you know, in, inspiration, I'm not a, afraid about AI. I know that we are more superior about this. Because, you know, the AI, the programming is that, you know, to collect from there, to collect from there, to collect, and then put it together. And maybe you don't, not going to like it. But we as human beings, we know exactly, we understand each other in a different way. The thing is, who is programming the AI to go viral? That's the new god. Well, the good thing is, <laughs> the good thing is that the large, the large language models, like I'll just stick to ChatGPT, those those models have already been proven to have certain biases with facial recognition and also with um, other types of bias. There's been studies on that and the hallucination factor, which sure you've all read about. And that's, that's compared to when people look up in the clouds and see a face. And the, 
the big large language models and the large neural networks are figuring out how to address that. So they have human teams, a positive and a negative. So they have a positive team that tries to install human values into the large language models. And then you have what they call red teams, which does the opposite, tries to provoke, tries to prod, to see how it will react. The good thing is, the word I mentioned before, the, uh, the inference AI applications like Ozone, um, I'm sure you're going to use it now because I've said it to you like five times. Uh, and it, I mean, my team has used it. Uh, but that is, those, t those aren't large language models. So they're trained to do a specific function, and that's really where the industry is going. Is, is there's going to be a lot of money thrown at it, and we're not talking about the chat, chat GPT trying to raise $7 trillion, um, which is something Sam Altman was talking about last week. I think he meant overall to, to get AI to the next place to go, because the chips now... It's all about the chip size. The reason it's taken 75 years is because over the last, there's like three eras of AI. Right now the chips are down to like five, six, seven, and eight nanometers, which is like you know, microscopic. We're not at, a, at the atomic level yet, but we're going to get there. And that's going to be the next paradigm shift. When that, that's going to happen relatively quickly. They, they've, they've tested with DNA systems in the last six months. Hopefully I'm not going off topic here, but it's really interesting because how we're going to be able to use that as the chip smaller. Uh, what's the company? Intel is building or built a plant. It's the biggest chip production plant in the world. It just built it last year. It's going to go operational next year. Primarily produce chips for smartphones. So we're going to be, it's just going to go faster and faster until we run into the next wall. The next wall is going to be when the chip can't get any smaller. I'm sure a lot of you have heard of Moore's Law, where the size of the chips will half in size every two years or something like that. It can't do that. It gets, it gets to the atomic level. But that's called molecular computing. And that makes silicone chips obsolete. So that's, that's where all of this is, is going. And you can, as I said before, you can tell I'm an all gas, no brakes guy. Because I've seen what it can do in my business, how it's made us more efficient. We've added people. We haven't gotten rid of people. Uh, so there's always that concern that I don't think is relevant for most music companies, especially most independent labels. Uh, but it's something we do have to pay attention to and, 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 and watch. But I, I have had an incredibly positive experience dealing with the whole vertical process of finding an artist or dealing with it, ideally most with established artists, dealing with an artist from the writing to the marketplace. There's no part of that food chain that AI hasn't, I'm going to say, revolutionized for us in the last three years, three to four years. It's not in the last year. It's only because of ChatGPT that everybody's kind of like, wait a second, this is, I use Alexa, I use Siri, I use Waze. So we're all, and a and hundred others, Salesforce.com, it's all AI driven now too. So it's, it's ubiquitous. So, as Bob said, you know, regarding, you know, this uh, type of new technology and uh, all these devices, I don't know if, uh, you know, some of you, you, maybe you don't know that Romania, for example, has the second biggest um, internet speed in the world, maybe the first one. And also the second language spoken in Microsoft is Romanian language, and the third one is an Apple music, in Apple, you know, the company. Because we have good programmers, you know, we've been, you know, taught, you know, we, we had this type of um, education and history in programming and developing new things, like, you know, because we've been like a small country with, uh, you know, not too many opportunities. So we had to be smart. So we invented a lot of things, like even, okay. So what I'm saying that, you know, starting from the 90s, we had hard drives, you know, biologically hard drives, you know, that you could have like 20 or 40 terabytes on only one little thing. Of course, it was, you know, um, 
in different institutions. But we had those technology from a long time as Romanians. But um, the thing is, the threat, the real threat is only who's programming it. And look, even I have a lot of friends, you know, like not only in the music uh, industry, but also influencers. So they are doing, hey, let's do that. You know, the algorithm is going to do that. Uh, let's post that, uh, you know, that hour. I'm telling you, this is everything programming. Everything has a purpose. That thing, who is doing that, it's perfectly, I don't know, perfectly balanced. So we don't know, the thing is, we still have to do our thing, you know, like, you know, creating the right, the best music, and, you know, enjoy what we are doing, and just, you know, don't be attached about about your viral thing because if you're going to be attached like hey i want to do you know i want to become big 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 i want you know i have i want a, a billion streams mm. you're gonna go to depression you're gonna start to use prozac if you're gonna think like that so just you know relax enjoy your music enjoy life because still you're we are still you know you know in a nice living world so this is the only threat you know but there is no threat if you're not attached there's not going to be any threats so just enjoy music and let's go <laughs> i'm sorry you know I, i'm not so good you know in talking you know but hope you understand me my english is still in development <laughs> yeah. i think um the way I look at it is we're going to move into a time for tremendous innovation overall as far as what else, how else this can help the business. And I use the recent Beatles examples because the Apple Beatles, not Steve Jobs' Apple, have done some really amazing things over the last couple of years, even, even like the Get Back movie that was, that was Peter Jackson. But Peter Jackson is way ahead. He's always way ahead. When he did the Hobbit movies, he was way ahead, but he's way ahead with AI technology. So if you look what he did in that movie where he was able to really take the movie apart, take the film apart, and focus on conversations between Ringo and Paul and, and, and the other guys, and pull that out and bring it to the front. All AI, the recent Beatles single that was all over, that was complete AI. So that was uh, Giles Martin, George Martin's son. And the Revolver uh, re-release last year did the same thing. It's, 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 it's beautiful. And they upgraded that using the mono tapes and got it to such an extreme level, it's just beautiful to listen to on crappy speakers too. Uh, and now there's, there's also the audio visual side, which is a big part of our business with, with, uh, with, from YouTube and Netflix. As far as revenue generation, there's an app that we use called Topaz. And Topaz can, can bring it to uh, an old, old video, because we deal a lot with old estates and we're able to take old TV shows and upgrade it to HD quality using this Topaz app. And it's not rocket science. If I can figure it out, um, it, it's, it's just, they make it easy for you, but it's all your prompts. You have to know what you want. If, they, if you look at old videos and they have the, that letterboxing and all that stuff, you can get rid of all that. You can improve the audio quality. Uh, that's the best one that I've seen, but it just, what that did, and talking about innovation, that enabled us to be like, wait, we just did this for this catalog. Let's go, do, let's go do more deals. So it increases our business. We have to hire more people. It helps us grow our business. So it's, that's the way we like to look at it, is that's enabling us to put things on Apple TV, for instance, which has such high delivery standards that three years ago would have been, we, we wouldn't even have submitted them because you know you're going to get rejected just because they have such high standards for the Apple TV. Uh, so just, we're always thinking about different ways to innovate. We communicate with the creators of some of these apps. And I, I noticed I did write down before that app I mentioned before that we use for artwork is Stable Diffusion. Uh, so if you Google that, you'll, you can test it out. And all this stuff is free to test out. They all have corporate programs that are very inexpensive if you, if you decide to do that. But most of the stuff is just, it's, it's, it's free to use, and it's state-of-the-art. I totally agree with Bob, you know, let's try all these things. Because, you know, 
that's why we're here. Let's try, you know, let's enjoy it. Let's see what's going on. I think, you know, this life is like a game, you know, has different levels. <laughs> so, yeah, let's try. For example, <clears throat> um, tomorrow I'm going to release one video of mine um, which, uh, you know, we, we kind of, you know, used the AI thing. Because, you know, the director was in one part of the world, he was in Dominican Republic, I was in Europe, something like that, and he asked me, Kosti, please, can you shoot, you know, some kind of images with your face doing something, blah, 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 and I will put with AI, he, we, we found, you know, another three guys, you know, I don't know, they came from Mars, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> so, with a, and you're gonna, we're going to use a new technology, and also a little bit, you know, just we started, like, we try to see what's going on. And this AI, you know, like, can help us, you know, regarding, you know, the images, you know, like the way we can put, you know, and also editing things. So, um, yeah, let's try it, you know, let's, let's enjoy it. Like, come on, what's, what can be wrong? When it's going to be wrong, we're going to feel it. But till then... <laughs> we'll see. So, yeah, tomorrow I'm going to use, like, will be, like, my, kind of my first video using the AI just a little bit and also a new technology. I cannot say exactly what's the name of it because th these three guys from Mars, I don't know, we, we have our thing to do. But, uh, yeah, it's happening. So, it's going to, it's going to be interesting, you know, in the future because everybody... At a one point, a lot of people we're gonna have they're gonna have access to this technology. The thing is how we're gonna use it in and which are the purposes. One of one other thing to mention uh, that I think is important. The majors have been buying up analytics companies for like five years, all AI based. The most recent one was either called Soda Pop or Soda Phone that Warner's purchased out of out of uh, Toronto, I believe. And they use, it's, they're learning models, so they just have access to whatever data sets that you'd be interested in. We, I mean, we all know what they are, streams, views, from various social media sites. And they use that in their research. Uh, they, still have, they still have the young, we used to call them college reps years ago, but they still have young people analyzing the data too and very involved. But they're using these massive uh, data sets to help them hone in on primarily unsigned artists, but also even for their own developing artists, because it's effectively, I mean, that's their competitive advantage, that's their strong suit. I mean, that's, that's, that's what the majors do, is they find new, new talent and then spend millions and millions of dollars to develop it when they find one that they believe in. But now they're buying up these analytics companies, which, which shows you how much they value this for, for, for years. And there's a whole bunch of them. There's a whole bunch of them. Anyone that's been purchased in the last three years, because AI is now a buzzword. It's, it's become, remember, last year, for a year and a half, I was involved, still involved with a company that was blockchain-based. And all of a sudden, blockchain became a dirty word because of some of the problems with blockchain last year. So it's, it's flipped now where everybody, even if you're in a blockchain company, you're saying you're an AI company because AI is involved somehow, because it's, it's, uh, it's also for new companies, it's a way to put you in a better spot to raise uh, some money, especially in, in our business, if you're looking to launch, because it doesn't exist right now, a, a blockchain AI DSP. It's, it's coming. Um, there's two I know are trying to raise money, but that's gonna be an exciting time too with integrated DSP. There's gonna be, they're gonna be selling much more than much more than, than music. I, I project the first one is going to be launched uh, end of this year. Warner Music's involved with it. Uh, but I don't know if it's going to upend anything. I look at it as accretive, as adding value, not as, not as taking away from, from anything else, just like all the AI apps. So, um, <clears throat> as I said, regarding the writing, Okay, so regarding, I'm going to be very quick, regarding the writing thing, we're going to have, as human being, the surprise element. So I'm not afraid about AI. We still have one advantage, because the AI on all platforms 
they're gonna see they need people to keep them on those platforms so in this thing so this thing you know gonna help us to be more creative and to be more you know connected with the people so i think let's enjoy one more time life experience everything all the those tools they are coming with so that's it i don't know i like i like jamaica anyway Porta. <laughs> i enjoy jamaica we're gonna move into the q a part of this if anybody has any questions yes raise your hand i can't really see anybody Hello, gentlemen. Um, fantastic presentation. Um, I'm Stefan from Barbados. And on that, from someone coming from a small island and representing those who do not have necessarily resources available that others do, what AI models will you recommend for the up and coming artists now trying to break in that will assist them in creating better products? Well, thanks for your question. The, the Everything, most, most of what I mentioned is, is discoverable on Google and free. Like the, they're, they're, they're not, these aren't for, for, they're not charging for their usage for the individual artists. And also, there are a lot of them. So for instance, the one I mentioned before, Ozone. If you, if you ask ChatGPT, spit me out, once again, free, spit me out. Well, you're not, you don't say spit me out. There's little hacks with ChatGPT. Act as if is one of them. If you start a question with that, it, you'll get a tighter answer. Uh, you say, act as if uh, um, I'm doing a lecture on companies similar to Ozone, the mastering AI application. That's the question. You ask them that, and they'll spit you out five more. Because for a producer or a mastering engineer, there might be one that you like better than the other. For lyric generation and things like that, geez, there are 15 of them that people use. Lyric gen, song gen, but there's a ton of them. Um, once again, the same thing. It's, they're, all, they're all free to use. So there's no, there, there's really no blockage. It's, there used to be a lot more blockage. If you wanted to do a record when I started, you had to go to a big studio and you had to be signed by a ma major usually. I mean, independence was still big back then, but you don't have to do that anymore. Now more than ever. And then it's, a, then it's up to the artist after that, generating followers and getting some traction and getting noticed by a major using one of those data platforms. Anybody else? Hello, good day. Up in the back. <laughs> oh, up there, okay. <laughs> yes, 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 in the rafters. Good morning, good afternoon. Um, I go by the name of Sherwin Dupes Bryce. I'm from the island of St. Lucia. Um, we use, my, my, my business partner and I, the Mecca, we've been using AI for quite some time, all of the tools you've been speaking about. Something that's been coming to light for us is, what are the discussions as it relates to the legal aspect, copyright protection and understanding? Is it gonna be a situation where the stuff that we create, is it gonna be shared with those platforms? Do we own, own it? I've seen some articles where it's like, oh, if it's made with AI, you can't copyright it. Do you guys have those type of discussions? I'm not concerned about it yet. I understand we're going into a new world, but what are the conversations that are happening around that right now? The U.S. I, copyright office, can I take this? The U.S. copyright office is actually working on a paper. I mean, this is, this is not new. The U.S. copyright office had to deal with this with cameras. And then with the big Google search engines, or the big search engines, they were all sued for copyright infringement. But the U.S. court system, viewed it was fair use. This is a bit different. The US Copyright Office has already turned down AI works that were submitted the, because they were 100% created. So if, if something's created 100% by AI, like the, the Boomi app, you can't copyright it right now. So every, everyone thinks that the Copyright Office, that's gonna be, that's gonna be their ruling, but there's no, nothing against using it to help with a verse, uh, to help with a line. But if you use it to create a whole song and you have no input whatsoever, that's a completely different animal. But I'm assuming you're not doing that. You're, you're using it as an as a aid. I use the same example where instead of, having, instead of having five people in a room, I mean, I used to have 13 writers on a couple albums that I'm uh, just thinking of. Now maybe three because 
or it might still be 13, uh, because you don't, you don't have to give the app you use, like SongGen, you don't have to give them credit if they just helped with a verse. I know people that use it just to get feedback, and then they say, you know, I really don't like what you did, uh, and use it that way. Hello, everyone. Uh, fantastic pre present. Fantastic panel you guys have been doing. I appreciate what you've been saying. I think uh, a very common fear with, with AI and its implementation into the music industry is that uh, a tool is a tool, right? But then when you have a tool that can keep growing, a hammer could hammer in a nail and take it out. But when the hammer could get its own nails, then me as a builder starts to get scared. So would there ever be some sort of limitation or protection put into place for artists, their identities, and being able to retain that? I think it's already happening this. Like, of course, look, what happened with the Drake vocals, with the Drake voice, you know? Immediately they stopped that thing. So, for sure, gonna be limitations, you know? And look, the majors, the majors, they don't wanna lose. Bro, they don't want to lose. They're going to make something that, you know, AI is going to, is going to be AI in terms of writing or I don't know, something, you know, like creating. And maybe we're going to use it as a, a tool. Just, I don't know, for, I don't know exactly. But for sure it will be regulations 100%. Like, for example, me as an artist, I, would, I wouldn't like to, you know, some, everyone to, you know, to use my vocals, you know, my, my, my color of voice. Maybe I don't want. So for sure will be some kind of agreement, some kind of limitation, some kind of legal things. This is my point of view, I think. It's already, it's already happening. Like for instance, there's two, ways, there's two ways, two things that are happening or have happened. If you read when Grimes gave some applications permission to use her likeness and voice under the agreement that she gets 50%. You're also gonna see brands uh, celebrities use AI the same way where they're going to be able to appear in commercials uh, and not be there uh, that's 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 happening then you have there's another app called flawless that Hollywood's using right now in a similar type way where let's say they're shooting a very expensive movie and they want to change some of the dialogue they can do that and you'll not know the difference uh, so a lot of these things involving uh, artists and, 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 uh, and people in Hollywood, it's, it's all being addressed for that reason. So you're gonna be compensated fairly. That's gonna be something that I'm not too concerned about that. I look at it, if you're a, if you're a big star, I'll use the accretive word again, you're gonna be able to do more with less. You're gonna be able to appear more. You're gonna be able to, the, 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 app, the AI app that people use to create the music, it's called Audio Box, there's another one. Um, it, it works the same way. This is kind of, I don't know how I feel about this one, where if you're a, you're a band, you can actually use this to create, you can submit a song into this and it'll, it'll put music behind it that sounds exactly like you. But you own it. You own it. It's not like anybody else can use it. Hi, my name is Oli Matatal. I'm an international journalist and publicist. I'm here representing Source Magazine and my company, Senjigen Productions. I use AI um, and I, I find it very useful. I've been using it for almost, I think a year or two now actually. I use it to help me with my press releases, articles, et cetera. My question though is, is a two-faced question. I didn't hear you mention much about the metaverse. I was trying to facilitate um, uh, uh, an interview on the metaverse with actually my client Ghost and Bounty Killer uh, two months ago, but we had so many technological issues. Can you talk about the metaverse and uh, some of the things that we're going to have to go through to kind of make the metaverse a little bit more uh, accessible and friendlier? And then also you mentioned about the microchip. I'm a little bit concerned about the microchip. Um, just talk a little bit about the future of the microchip. Well, there's the microchip and there's also what really Thanks for your question, because you just made me think of something that I, I should have mentioned. Uh, the GPU, the graphic processing chip, which 
got stronger and stronger in the last 10 years, primarily from the video game world. That technology has been really critical to where we are now with AI, with the, with the large learning models, once again, the chat GPTs uh, of the world. Uh, I, I don't think the chips will ever go away. They're just, they're, it, eventually they'll be naturally obsolete. Like the chips that we have in our kitchen appliances are still four, 40 nanometers. So now what we have in our phone is, depending on your phone, I think it's down the lowest, it's five. It could be wrong, it might still be seven. Uh, no. But it's, it's, uh, it's down to five. Uh, and as I mentioned before, the, it's gonna keep getting stronger and stronger, but eventually the, the chips are gonna be obsolete because we're gonna move to molecules, we're gonna move to atomic computing, molecular computing. It's a real thing, you can, you can Google it. It's, 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 not, it's not made up. It's all being tested right now as we speak. There's been positive tests with it, but it's not ready for the market. We've got 10 years, 15, and that's gonna be a, an explosion in technology and capabilities of what you can do with it, especially like in medical research and places like that where the time now, just with AI, uh, to, to get to drug testing, it's, it's gonna go from five years to two years, and Google's very involved with that. Think what that means as far as bringing drugs to market. It's going to just be uh, an incredible time for uh, a, lot, a lot of it's focused on cancer research. And sorry, the metaverse. Metaverse has kind of taken a back step because of what's happened with, with, with AI, even though it's, it's directly involved. But that's going to come down to Apple and Google and the big six or seven really focusing on it. But right now, I think their, their focus is, I mean, they're spending tens of billions of dollars on AI, and the only company that's really making a huge profit off of it is NVIDIA, because they're providing all the chips, right? So the, the rest of these guys have to monetize, even though ChatGPT has annualized revenue now of $2 million, one of the fastest growing tech companies in that period of, of, of all time, in one year. So it's only gonna go up. They don't know how yet, though, how they're gonna monetize it. Hopefully that kind of answers your question. Yeah, so regarding the technology, as Bob's, Bob said, at, you know, five nanometers, now it's two nanometers. The China has, you know, they announced that they have, you know, chips with two nanometers technology, which is like beyond, it's almost, you know, almost close to molecules. So the power of, you know, the power of those chips, you know, to bounding together, it's unbelievable, it's crazy. Uh, and regarding the metaverse, the metaverse, you know, we also, you know, we tried in Eastern Europe. It, it still is not very, it's not, it's not so, people that, that don't want to go there still, you know. They prefer, you know, maybe we're going to have those glasses, sunglasses, whatever they call. But metaverse still you know, has to wait a little bit, my opinion. I think we have time for one more if anybody else has a question. If not, thanks for your questions. Thank you. All right. Thanks, guys.